channel. Today I'm going to teach you six simple tricks for acrylic painting in your sketchbook. So my first recommendation is to actually use canvas paper when you're painting in acrylics. The paint just goes on smoother, it stays wet longer, and it's all in all just way easier to use. So I'm going to show you a couple of options for canvas paper. As you can see, it says oil and acrylic, and it is actual canvas that has already been primed, and again, it's just super easy and great, great, great to use. Um, so this is a smaller nine by 12 size. There are also some much bigger sizes. This one is a 12 by 16. So if you're wanting to create some paintings, like smaller paintings, but that you could actually frame, this is a great size and a really great option to use. Um, however, the problem that I found is that there aren't any actual sketchbooks made out of canvas paper. I couldn't find anything that uh, was actually bound together. These are pads and you have to tear it off sheet by sheet. If you tried to flip it over, it's gonna come out and tear and break. Um, and so I found this sketchbook, which is actually watercolor paper, and I'm gonna show you what I did to make it a little bit more suitable for painting in acrylic so that you could actually have a sketchbook made for acrylic painting. Now, if you are talented in bookmaking, you could technically uh, chop up these papers and kind of bind them and create your own sketchbook. I did take a bookmaking class in college, but at this point in my life, I just don't have time for that. But if you have a little bit of extra free time and you can create your own sketchbook out of canvas paper, that would be amazing. Um, I just really wish that the market kind of offered those in art supply shops or online to buy, but it just doesn't. So I'm gonna teach you how I kind of got around this. Okay, so this is the first sketchbook that I'm going to prime. I have this huge um, thing of gesso, which is perfect to prime the paper with. Um, and I just clip down the paper so that it does not warp while the gesso is drying. And just in case anyone is interested, this is the sketchbook that I bought. So you can see it there. It's $18, 140 pound paper, and it is actually watercolor paper because I couldn't find any kind of sketchbook that would be for acrylic painting, only for watercolor. <laughs> so I'm just gonna prime it and see what happens. So to get this big bucket open, you do need some tools, so I'm just going to kind of crank this open. Yay! It's still a huge, full bucket of beautiful gesso. I love it. <laughs> and I'm just going to get an old brush. This is just kind of an old, hard, nasty brush. And I have my water here. So I'm just going to get some of the gesso and prime my paper. The reason why I'm doing this, uh, priming the paper, is because the watercolor paper tends to, you know, be made to absorb water because it's, this is for watercolors. Um, but when you're painting with acrylics, what tends to happen is that it gets really dry and absorbs the paint, uh, the wetness of the paint really, really fast. And it makes it hard to work in acrylics on watercolor paper is what I've noticed. Now, if you're working on canvas paper or something that's already been primed, it's going to make it a lot easier. Just it makes the acrylics kind of stay wet longer on the page. So that is why I'm kind of priming this paper first. Of course, I'm not able to get underneath where the clips are, but we don't want the paper to warp. So that's okay. I'm just trying to get kind of a smooth gesso on here.
Okay, and then I'm just going to put my brush back in the water and wait for this to dry, and then I'll do a couple more uh, pages. And I'm trying to create a plan for this sketchbook because I don't want to for it to be too random. I want kind of a sketchbook that is dedicated to acrylics and for um, a certain collection to kind of come out of it. So my second trick is actually how to keep acrylic paints wet for a longer period of time. So when I was in college, I actually did oil painting and I love oil painting because the paint stays wet, it takes a few days to dry, but it's not always uh, really great to have in your home because it creates a lot of fumes. So if you don't have the right ventilation, it can also be very messy. Um, it can get all over you and all over your house. <laughs> so acrylics are better to really use at home, but I was really struggling with how to keep these acrylic paints wet because they dry so fast, like in a few minutes really, um, if you're not constantly keeping them wet. But I figured out a few ways to keep them wet for much longer, even a few days, so that they don't dry out and you're not actually wasting paint. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so the best way to really keep your acrylic paints wet is to get a glass dish like kind of like this it's a baking dish um, it is glass you can get Pyrex or something similar it comes with a lid so I think I actually bought this on Amazon but the lid isn't completely airtight so what I like to do is use actual cling wrap or saran wrap once I have all my paints in here to seal it up, but we will get to that in a minute. So one of the best things I have found is this Painter's Pal acrylic paper, which keeps acrylic and other water soluble paints moist for hours. And really when you are sealing up your entire palette super airtight, it will keep it wet for actually days so that you're not wasting your paint. And this paper sheet of paper fits perfectly. It is a nine by 12, but it fits pretty much perfectly in this type of dish. Now, if you don't want to go ahead and buy a glass baking dish and you know, you're like, hey, I like actually using it for baking and I don't wanna buy something new. Then another thing you could do is to just take an old like takeout um, plastic thing that you would probably either recycle or throw away and you can just cut up little pieces of this exact paper and place it in here. And you really don't even need saran wrap because this uh, clips together pretty tightly so it's going to keep it wet. Or what you can do is buy a, uh, a glass jar or any kind of spray bottle and you can actually spray your paper make sure that you label it and you can really just spray your paper until it is pretty wet. Now you might want to let it sit for a minute so that the paper can actually absorb the water before you put your paints down because otherwise your paints may, may bleed a little bit. Um, as you'll see. Okay, so what you can actually do is if you feel like your paper is too wet and you've got just a little bit too much water on it, is you can let it all drain off and then kind of let the water go into the glass and flip your paper over so that now both sides of the paper are getting evenly wet. All right, now my plan is to paint a lot of plants in my sketchbook. So I have pulled out all of my green paints, so I'm just going to kind of spread them out. This okay, so now let's assume that you are totally finished painting and you are ready to clean up for the day. I would go ahead and give one more spray um, of your water to your palette just to make sure everything is still super wet. And then you want to grab your saran wrap or cling wrap and um, come over the entire palette. And just try to pull it tight and make sure there's no um, gaps. And you can always add more if it's uh, messing up in an area or if you tear a hole in it. And then you'll just 
ones that come with the lid and put the lid on. And then your acrylic paints will literally stay wet for days and days. Yay! So my third trick for acrylic painting is how to actually mix colors when you are painting because sometimes you can't afford to buy every color in the rainbow and of course you need a broad spectrum of colors. So how do you actually figure out which colors to mix quickly uh, and just kind of have that go-to. So as a little bonus tip, what you can do is you can take an old egg carton and gesso it, and this serves as a really great mixing palette for your acrylic paints. It helps keep colors separated, and you can throw it away um, when you're done with it. So it's just a really great way to kind of repurpose something that you already have in your home. Now I tend to like to work a little bit systematically so you can kind of see I'm going from lighter to darker um, with the browns and of course you can also mix colors. Now you can of course um, mix these colors right here on the palette so I'll just show you if I wanted to get a kind of a in between color of these two colors I can just mix them there and then it's nice um, I can kind of see what I have and the paper is super wet so this is going to stay wet for a while however sometimes when you get start mixing all over the palette the palette gets messy and of course you want to be able to save these paints for a few days which is when which is when we come to our egg carton that we so nicely gessoed so what we can also do is mix these combinations in here and then you know you can saran wrap this if you really want to save it but what's most likely going to happen is you're just going to throw this away. So let's try to mix. Let's say we want a more lime green color. I'm going to come in here and get some of this color in here good. And you can, of course, get more if you feel like you know that this is going to be a great color and you don't really need to experiment too much. Get some of the yellow. And I probably should have cleaned my brush better here. You can see some of the green. Yeah, and then this color is, because it's in an egg carton, it's not going to bleed into these other colors. You can really keep a nice separation for your acrylic paints. And if you're worried about this drying out because it doesn't have this wet paper, I would just add more water either from your water jar or again, get this and just spray it. You can spray everything beforehand as well. And that will be perfect. So for tips of four through six, I'm actually gonna send you over to my friend and colleague, Joanna Clay, who is an amazing artist and has some amazing things to teach you about acrylic painting. So definitely check the link in the description and go check out her video for tips four through six. And until then, you can enjoy watching me paint, paint some plants in my sketchbook. Um, I'm trying to fill this whole sketchbook with uh, plants and botanicals and acrylic painting. So that's sort of the goal for this sketchbook. And make sure to hit that like button if you like this video and hit the bell to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.